Good morning, everyone. More updates on COVID-19 and what's working, what's not working, who's it working with. And so there's a very wonderful study that's just come out. I think it's England. You have to, uh, I keep up with these things. I don't keep it, uh, it's all on the C drive, not all on the desktop. So there's a uh, hormonal steroid, from my understanding, called dexamethasone that when given to patients who are on ventilators, they have a much significantly higher chances of uh, recovering from COVID-19. If they are not on the ventilators, doesn't seem like it makes a difference, uh, minimal, minimal difference. Well, so we're going to look at people who are on the ventilators and who aren't. And we're going to also look at uh, life course development from embryo, try one. We talked about this yesterday. And children uh, um, under age 10 who do not seem to get this at all. And then guess what moves in? Our hormones, right? And the brain is kind of finished at, um, at uh, uh, mid-late 20s. 20s after the hormones have done their job, right? So, um, and so we've got, we've got obese, happy hypoxics, um, older, and people, those with comorbidities. That means that people have multiple disease uh, pathologies or heart disease and lung disease and arthritis and uh, bad knees, whatever. And those with diabetes. Diabetes is in there too. In fact, that's a whole different study. To me, as I see it, all of these fold back into our oxygenated health, pro-oxic health. Who is not getting this? Athletes. who have really strong mitochondria, those things are tight. Those things are tight. Whereas over here, the mitochondria in, in the disease models are mutated, engorged with electrons, electrons and, and uh, kind of spread apart, kind of like a wood that's been wet and like splits open. They, they're split. So they're not, they're not intact. They're not able to do their job. Also, you get mitochondria that have gone into almost like a crescent shape. And once this happens in within a larger cell, those mitochondria signal for the cell death. The mitochondria are in charge of our, this is the cell. <laughs> it's kind of round. <laughs> um, signal for the death of the cell. That's called um, apoptosis. That's when the cell does a suicide. And when it dies of kind of outside influences, lead or <sighs> necrosis, Alzheimer's plaques. But basically, the health of the cell is dependent on the health of the mitochondria. And when even when necrosis happens, it's, it's the mitochondria that shut the cell down. Okay, so um, this, this, this is a, let me double check here, because it is a steroid and a hormone, I believe. Common steroid drug, breakthrough. And I haven't studied this quite yet, but it really does make a huge difference in those who are on a ventilator. So what does that tell me? When you're on a ventilator, you're completely dependent at this, at the point that you get on that ventilator, you're put in a comatose state. You're on high levels of pain drugs, anti-cough drugs. Uh, you are completely sedated. You are at the mercy of whether the ventilator works or not. What's the hormone going to do? What's the steroid going to do? It's going to 
magically, as it were, enter into the cell and bolster it. We talk about bolstering the system with oxygenation, prooxic, either mechanical, open that back up, back breathing is what uh, saves the patients so they don't have to go on the, on the um, respirator. That's another new science. That's another finding that you've got people who, who would go on the respirator. Here's the, res here's the uh, ventilator. These are vented over here. This is the new drug. And these are, um, these are people who will go over. So there's, you've got um, a group of people and you know three of them would go over. But early on, if you turn them on their tummy and get them back breathing, they don't go on the ventilator. What, do you, what is that saying? That's telling me that back breathing is being engaged. We used to be on all fours. That's kind of the interesting part of it. We used to be on all fours in our confirmation of our nerves uh, uh, lineage or that come out of the spinal cord are still in that confirmation. We're, we are still evolving. And we've stood up and... Um, but our, our confirmation is still such that we get the, the bulk of our breath from back breathing, pulls up the diaphragm. So that is this, and they call it prone position, prone, P-R-O-N-E, prone. Not drone, prone, not pronk, prone. And that's where our head's down, we're looking down, and our, we're on the table, and a um, lot well, of these people are obese, so I think they even cut holes in here, but anyway, and so the back can go up and down, up and down. It's a mechanical type thing, right? And your shoulders are not stressed, and your, and your jaw is loose, this is all the things I talk about in our bre in my breathing um, seminars. That um, let me get my hair going in the right direction here. <laughs> Good morning, <laughs> uh, and uh, and that saves these people. So these people who are in the prone, they stay over here. No ventilators. You know, this is where the ventilators come in, and we know what happens when the ventilators come in. Most most COVID nineteen patients lose. The game, they die. Now enter this dexamethasone that actually gets rid of a, a you know about a third of these. A, a, you know, out of a hundred patients, only thirty-three will die. I mean, only 30, uh, 33 will survive. Uh, the ones others, the ones that would normally pass, it saves thirty-three people. That's a big, 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 big increase. Now, what is that? So how, how does the, um, the steroid change this outcome? Well, it moves in. We, we've given up control of our own breathing. We're letting the ventilator do it. Uh, and the steroid comes in and says, hey, this cell's still kicking. It's, it, you know, uh, um, it, goes into, it goes into this age group. So this is, this is uh, say, 1 to 10. This is 10 to 20, where the hormones come in, right? And what happens when kids' hormones start rolling in and, and uh, anything goes? <laughs> if you're a parent, it's a difficult age. Lots of things are going, but the system really activates emotional lability, ups and downs, um, uh, skin changes, sexual urges, personality changes. The system is like, boom. Uh, it's not. It's more than rebooted. It is uh, transformed. It transforms these steroids and hormones, and that's a simple uh, explanation. Uh, then we get into our twenties, and we, you know, our, our frontal lobe has developed. And we're able to kind of control these impulses and understand what consequences are. 
Our frontal lobe is not here, not going yet. No frontal lobe yet. It, well, it's on the way, OTW. And when it's on the way, yep, teenagers think they know everything, but you know, there's not the experience and all of that. And, and that's a wonderful thing, and it's a hard thing, too, for them and everyone else. <laughs> And here, uh, you know, I would say um, it's trying to grow, right? It's, it's budding. And here it kind of, you know, f finishes. This is where the finishing of the brain, it's done pretty much here. And then you get your 30s and 40s, which are in 50s. 50 is a new 30. I can vouch for that. Yay. And then, you know, then you, then you get 60 years young and 70 years young and 80 years young. And my mother is 90 years young. How nice is that? So that's the newest, the latest. These are, these are a combination of findings that are telling me and hopefully telling you that an oxygenated cell will already be already bolstered. Why? Because the mitochondria in athletes are bolstered, right? People who are um, a low cal, I'll say, you know, non obese, non obese, they are in a good place. That is when you're when you're not burning glucose all day to get cheap corn oil fuel, as I call it, for the car. That cheap corn oil, oil fuel doesn't do much for you. So when you're on a lower calorie diet, you know, you, you, your choices lead you to more exercise, outdoors, other, other things that are, and consciously or unconsciously, you rely more on breath as a fuel. And that becomes a fuel, unless you become a happy hypoxic. So these are these non-obese, non-obese, they're doing okay. And uh, these children under 10, they're doing okay. And that is a period of rapid growth, which means incessant chopping away, cleavage, antioxidant, boom, 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 boom. Cut down, cut down. This is what... 100, we're taking this 100 trillion neuron uh, uh, germ cells down to 100 billion. So we're taking away, and that's when they say you only, you only use 10% of your brain power. That's just the literal, that's just the, uh, you know, seeds in a packet. You got 100 seeds, maybe 10 of them will grow, right? Very similar, so multiply that by... A trillion, <laughs> hundred trillion. Okay, uh, so um, uh, people under age ten, and we're seeing, you know, um, um, uh, young people basically under fifty don't get it, right? They're okay. I think I should put those around that button. Uh, unless you're happy hypoxic, we're back to the happy hypoxics. talked yesterday about how we can drive the system without breathing and that comes in handy for sprints for for flash superhuman type uh, stuff for escape you hold your breath or and and you just what was that I uh, get away from things that it serves a purpose in that way but in the evolutionary growth sense, to fully self-actualize one cell at a time, it needs an oxygen gradient. Not just oxygen, but maintaining an oxygen gradient. So you always have that reserve. Your core is kind of always on the above half, above three quarters. And we do that with oxygen. That's a great way to do that. Okay. So that's about the news here. Uh, scientists are still looking at, at uh, how viruses behave, what has led us to this situation. We need more science on these coronaviruses. 
yesterday I spoke about the possibility and the observation. Science has about a five-step process. One is, first one is observation. And I do a lot of that because I'm, I'm a little older and I was able to, and I stayed oxygenated and didn't take any happy hypoxic with me in my journey. And uh, I just um, uh, I try to put the pieces of the puzzle together, see the forest through the trees as experience and um, a form of wisdom. And so it's, I'm, I'm very honored to be able to do this in the sciences. So, um, all right, so we know who gets it, who doesn't get it, and we're trying to make sense of how and why it's all coming down the pipe the way it is. Um, but I was talking, and you know I talk about manganese. Let's go ahead and review manganese, not magnesium. MN, it's the second most abundant metal substance on the planet. You find it throughout the depths of the uh, ocean and in kind of in a flaky shale type formation. I believe it's usually black in um, above board, surfside. <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, not magnesium, not magnesium. Magnesium is important, but we're not talking about magnesium. We're talking about manganese, manganese. And so it comes in three forms, and I should have reviewed this before this morning, but bear with me. Um, and and it, it's, it's, the, it's the level of oxidation, which means the number of electrons that are um, present in, and create a valence. When there's more electrons or less, uh, you know, they go from positive to negative charges and magnetic and paramagnetic and a number of things. So in this lower form, and I believe it's uh, with three electrons, there's a sediment that occurs. There's a sediment. And this is all in a, in a viscous, you know, hydration. There's no light, there's no uh, photosynthesis at the, this level. And uh, there's a sediment involved. I mean, so it actually creates a material like, like, um, like um, soil-ish type. But here is at the bottom of the ocean. more into that to see what that's all about. Okay, and then I believe it's MN1 here. Somehow it loses. In this, the sun is involved. Photosynthesis is involved. And this was this cyano. This is at lower levels of the ocean. And this is very deep. And this is, um, you know, kind of surface area. Here's the waves, right? I believe this is manganese with two electrons, which ends up in our um, uh, is, when it when it combines with sunlight up at this upper level, it maintains a shape, and it also is very dynamic with um, interplays with iron, water photosynthesis in the manganese, and and that's where you get this gallionella which is a bacteria. And that bacteria, my, I'm theorizing at this point that this back, that gallionella, just like a gallon, but with an Ella, gallionella, um, or Cinderella with a gallon. <laughs> gallionella, Cinderella. Okay. Um, this, uh, it, it maintains its bean shape and it's, uh, it um, seems to function as our mitochondria. So as things moved along and the algae created more and more oxygen, so it's manganese, iron, oxygen, and sunlight, and probably some calcium in there. You know, everything that, that's, you know, and zinc, of course, is always around and copper. But so, so these sediments, these materials are part of what manganese does. And down here, this is where um, uh, photosynthesis uh, occurs and oxygen is split. 
oxygen is split in this one and in this one through manganese. Okay, so there's some, you know, uh, these are, these are uh, findings that help us explain maybe what it's all about, where we came from. So this, th this um, COVID-19, my concern, um, 19. So we are like, we're, we're, we're kind of getting rid of the oxygen. <clears throat> so without oxygen, these things collapse. We've talked about this. The mitochondria, the uh, gallionella, everything. So, oh, so we are reversing this, right? We are reversing this when we're cutting out oxygen. And <clears throat> this is the, um, this is also a reversal of oxygen because at this, at this stage, at this form, it cuts out, um, um, uh, it cleaves oxygen from water as well in this second form. This is the best of my understanding. So I, I stand to be, you know, um, modify or correct uh, the, these, you know, especially the, the number of electrons. Uh, and then down at this lowest level where there's no oxygen, where, you know, very low levels of, uh, there's plenty of water, but this cannot cleave oxygen and you get a sediment. You get a particle, right? And so if you remember the animals that come, that this uh, COVID-19 allegedly comes from are nocturnal. Nocturnal, uh, um, I won't say anaerobic, but um, mm, hypoxic type animals. Um, twitch animals. The bats are kind of a twitch. We talked about twitch animals and twitch behavior is a low oxygen behavior. If someone sits there with their foot going bang, 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 that's hypoxia. And we are oxygenated. We move slower. We don't move like a bat. We don't move like a, like a, a, a roach. We don't scurry away like an insect. Those are also in that realm as well. So my concern is that this COVID-19 is moving in on this low oxygen and reversing these processes, possibly through manganese. I mean, it makes sense to me. It's an observation and I'm turning it into a hypothesis. And such that, you know, and scientists have been wanting to tried to get this reversal, the funding has been cut from it for because there's a lot of energy that's exchanged. That's why mitochondria provide nuclear level fuel because there's energy exchanged when oxygen is split. And that's uh, how we get to the moon and all that sort of stuff too. I mean, it the pairs into, you know, these are all related. Uh, so <clears throat> that's my concern that our planet has been deoxygenated, which just as just as the planet was, the oxygen levels were going up here. When it got to, by the time it got to algae, algae was creating more and more oxygen, more and more oxygen, more and more oxygen. And we have, we have, um, we have uh, reversed that situation on this planet with, with um, industrialization. So the planet's had a breather. We can take a look at, we need to take a good look at what's happened in this, in this period of repose in the planet. Personally, I see a lot more nature, animals, good weather. Um, I see, a, you know, I can see the mountains from my now. I mean, the haze is lifted. The haze has lifted and life is very resilient. It's coming back quickly. We need to learn from this. And we also need to study the science of it. And, and if, if COVID is moving in on this industrialized environment, as it appears to be doing, these are also sludge areas. These are also, um, um, this is, you know, oxygen's very coming in very quickly at this level. Sorry, it's a kind of a mess, but um, I'm trying to use different colors. But this, and, and, the, and the virus moves in and turns our lungs to sludge. 
turns our lungs to sludge. Just like down here, sediment and sludge. So I'm just, I'm just interested as to, um, I'm kind of following this, the manganese and reversal of our evolutionary development and, and this um, easy come, easy go is what the COVID-19 is telling us. So I'm going to do another breathing uh, uh, session right now. To, uh, there was a um, colleague of mine put out something yesterday about breathing through the nose that creates nitric oxide, which is an, um, part of the antioxidant thing. And uh, that the nose itself, I had never seen that research, but okay. Um, I will um, try to incorporate that in. Breathing through the nose is a limited way of getting oxygen. It's a way of filtering oxygen. Of course, when you're olfactory, you're examining. It's a way to take a passive, pretty passive breath and examine what you are um, smelling. Is it edible? Is it hydrated? Uh, do my instincts say danger? We have instincts. So, all right. Thank you for listening. It's been a, another, um, I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled that I can go with all these sessions uh, day after day and continue to have the uh, science come down the um, uh, pipeline that, that gives us more um, facts with which to build um, our, our hypotheses and our theories at this point. So the use of hormones, the steroidal, uh, uh, methodicion, oh, what's it called again? Methodicion. No, I have to tell you exactly. A dexa metha zone. Dexa metha zone. Interesting. So I will look that up and how that is uh, bolstering our uh, lung ability to uh, bounce back from, from COVID while um, on the ventilator. And it's really fascinating that, that, that those who are not on the ventilator, it doesn't seem to help because we're still able to bolster without additional hormones. And so there's not a real significant difference. There's a little bit of difference, but not enough to, to claim that it's causal. But with those on the ventilator, hormonal push steroidal bolstering of the cells does seem to um, kick back and, and, and enable survival. All right. Have a blessed day. I'm so glad you're part of my world and, and, uh, and uh, a great discovery of fascinating discoveries. And uh, um, as scientists, we learn from disease. That's, we, when something goes wrong, that's what scientists do. We look at it from observation. Oh my gosh, what happened here? How did it go wrong? What could possibly have done? From my knowledge, how can I contribute to understanding what went wrong here? So as an oxygen you know, um, specialist, a pro-oxic specialist, studying manganese and transition metals all these years, and microcephaly in Northeast Brazil, and um, uh, uh, biogenesis, embryogenesis, neurogenesis, I'm able, I feel, to contribute to understanding how the mitochondria um, are um, players, major players, in how this uh, virus is playing out. And the mitochondria, from my observations, and no one else really talks about this, are descendants from a very common bacteria, Gallionella. That is uh, a, a metals-based bacteria uh, in, that forms in the presence of iron, manganese, oxygen, and water. So to be continued, onwards and upwards, outwards, whenever, not outwards, I need to go inwards. <laughs> I've been taking so much manganese, my glucose needs have gone down and I seem to be, uh, uh, I need to 
lessen my diet as we did in evolution. Great. Go for it. Have a great day and be blessed.